Hello and welcome back to the Hasbishan YouTube channel, it is Harry here and today it is time for the 12th instalment of the Nation Roulette series. As I always say, if you have missed any of the episodes thus far, a playlist link is down in the description if you would like to watch any of the others, which you definitely should do because, well, they're alright, I guess. We return to the former region of the Yugoslavia for the second time in this series, and considering the sheer number of countries that we could have covered thus far, it's quite incredible the two of them which have actually featured used to fall under one federal region. Slovenia are the northernmost country out of all of the independently recognised former Yugoslav territories, and also the third smallest, just ahead of Montenegro and Kosovo, but out of all of those seven countries, only Serbia and Croatia have qualified for more international tournaments than Slovenia have since the Yugoslav breakup in 1991, albeit Montenegro and Kosovo have both been recognised by FIFA and UEFA at much later times than the other five. Football was brought over to the Slovene region from Austria-Hungary during the early 20th century, although that was when it still had predominant control over Slovenia, with Slovenes even forming a part of the Austro-Hungarian army during World War I. Indeed, it would be Germans and Hungarians who would establish the first football clubs in the region between 1900 and 1906, with the club being formed by solely Slovenian people, not existing until 1911, in the form of Ereria, and I apologise in advance for the awful pronunciations that are about to ensue. After the end of the war and the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, they joined Serbia and Croatia in founding the Republic of Yugoslavia, and with that, they fell under the aegis of the Yugoslav Football Federation, although a Ljubljana Football Sub-Association would also be established in 1920 to take control of football on a local basis. Up until 1941, when all sporting activity in the Republic was suspended, Slovenian clubs would compete in the Sub-Associations League, with the champions granted access into the Yugoslav Championship each season, which mostly turned out to be Iralia, who won 12 Sub-Association Championships between 1920 and 1941, although no Slovenian team would emerge victorious once in those 21 years. This would be the case yet again for the post-World War II era in football, as much like Montenegro whom we discussed a few months back, Slovenian clubs would never win the Yugoslav first league until the region's dissolution in 1992, and the national team would only cap seven Slovenians in its entire history. Only two teams from the region, Naftalendeva and Olympia Ljubljana, would ever so much as compete in it, with the former only taking part in one season, the very first all the way back in 1946-47, and both clubs in question no longer exist, with Olympia filing for bankruptcy in 2005 and Nafta going bust in 2012. Olympia's predicament was particularly avoidable, but also a symbol of the financial problems plaguing Slovenian football since they became independent. Although Olympia would win the first four independent championships, the rise of teams like Gorica and Manibor posed a threat to their supremacy, and in response to this, their owner, Ivan Zidar, once described by Branko Oblak, a former Yugoslav superstar as a player, as autocratic in his ownership of the club, spent vast sums of money in an attempt to reclaim top spots and Champions League qualification. It didn't work, and by 1998, the club's assets had to be frozen, with players barely receiving half of their allocated salaries. In order to fix the situation, Zidar departed, and new ownership brought a new license and a new name, NSD NK Olympia, which only led to further confusion as to where the money from a European game in 2001 was meant to be transferred to, either the original or the new team. Even with this, they couldn't get rid of their old habits, and in 2002, after continued overspending in the transfer market and inability to pay their players wages in full, to win with a lack of success domestically and in European football, the situation reached its peak when it was claimed by Oblak, who was the manager by this point, that the team went 7 without a win at the end of the season in order to ruin their title chances because the brand new owner, Yuri Schollmeyer, didn't want to pay the players bonuses for if they became champions. Long story short, by 2005, there was no money for players' wages or for their league licence, with their debts reaching anywhere between 3 and 6 million euros, and they had to disband, reforming the following year. Back to where we were before, and in 1990, proposals were raised of the prospect of holding a referendum to determine whether or not Slovenia should depart Yugoslavia, with the northern regions in particular being hit hard in comparison to the southern regions owing to Yugoslavia's general economic decline. More than 90% of the populace backed the proposal, and in June 1991, after Serbia couldn't agree to the terms that Slovenia and Croatia posed to form a looser rule over Yugoslavia, both countries seceded. It was at this stage that, as an independent nation, the Ljubljana Football Sub-Association became the Slovenian Football Association, and they immediately gained memberships to both FIFA and UEFA, with the national team, which had been up to this point predominantly amateur and akin to regions like Catalonia, becoming formally recognised. 
Their first match following independence was against Estonia in June 1992, a game which finished in a 1-1 draw, although their debut on the international stage actually came in an unrecognised fixture against France all the way back in 1920, but they would lose that game 5-0. It would take the appointment of Srečko Katanek in 1998 to finally bring Slovenia to a major international tournament for the first time, as they beat Ukraine in the qualification playoffs for Euro 2000 to reach the finals in Holland and Belgium. Although drawn against Spain, Norway and, as fate would have it, Yugoslavia, they would only accrue two points and finish bottom of the group. This was, admittedly, a vast improvement from their 1998 World Cup qualification attempt, as they gained a measly one point from eight games from their qualifying group. Katanek pulled a team together divided by the poor relationship between people from Ljubljana and the eastern region of Styria, from which their star player, Zlatko Zahovic, came. But at the 2002 World Cup, for which Slovenia also qualified, Katanek and Zahovic, who had never personally seen eye to eye, had a public fallout. Zahovic's antics during a friendly game against Ghana in the build-up to the finals in Japan and South Korea, storming out of the stadium after being substituted, led to him supposedly apologising by saying that Katanika told him that he would sleep with Zahovic's mother, his words not mine, although much more vulgar than that, after a couple of misplaced passes, but it didn't pass with the team's code of conduct and Zahovic was sent home. Deprived of their star man, they would meekly lose all three of their group games without putting up much of a fight, and Katanik resigned in the immediate aftermath of their exit. Ever since 2002, they've only qualified for one tournament since, that being the 2010 World Cup in South Africa, and they were on the verge of qualifying for the knockout stages after having beaten Algeria and drawn with the USA, and all they had to do was avoid a defeat against an insipid England side, which they couldn't, and they subsequently finished third in their group. Ever since then, it has been a stream of failed qualification attempts, even with a golden generation at their disposal consisting of the likes of Jan Oblak, Josip Ilicic and Jasmin Kurtic. Even Samir Handanovic has had to retire from international football owing to Oblak's presence. The league, created in 1991, has been absolutely dominated by Manabor, who have won it 15 times to date, including five in a row between 2011 and 2015, with Gorica and the original Olympia Ljubljana having won it four times apiece, and the new Olympia Ljubljana having won it twice, once in 2016 and once in 2018. The current champions are Sedja, who are one of only two teams alongside Maribor to have competed in every Slovenian top flight season since 1991, which has been reduced in size from 21 teams in its very first season to 10 nowadays. However, the state of the domestic football scene is so dire that they find themselves below Liechtenstein in UEFA's coefficient rankings, and they don't even have a league, which shows how impressively the footballing quality in the country has fallen in recent times. Let's hope that there can be some resurgence over the coming years. That just about wraps up today's video on football in Slovenia. I do hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, of course, smash that like button and subscribe while you are at it. And go and check out all the other episodes that I've done. As I say, the playlist link is down in the description. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you then.